Beloved community, let us enter God's house with thanksgiving and God's presence with praise. For God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. God's faithfulness to all generations. Today, whether you are part of First Church, a joyful and justice-seeking church in the heart of our nation's capital, or whether you are a guest or friend joining us from many different locations, we welcome you to worship this morning as we celebrate the Christian year. The writer of the book of Ecclesiastes reminds us that for everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. The seasons of the church year, Advent, Christmas, Epiphany, Lent, Easter, and Pentecost form a cycle we call the liturgical year. This morning, we will journey through the church year experiencing a taste of each season. We will sing songs, just a verse or two, note which verses those are, led by our song leader, Marion Drake, and musician, Dennis Turner. Favorite songs for each season, and as you can already tell, we are in for a musical treat today. Celebrating the Christian year connects us more deeply to the birth, life, ministry, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Today, may the memory you, memories you carry of seasons past wash over you as we rejoice in the movement of God's Spirit among us. And following worship, all are invited to join us in the narthex for coffee and fellowship. 
Friends, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome into the shared experience of worshiping the God whose love knows no bounds. So let us cross the threshold into sacred time, beginning with our opening hymn, Praise to the Living God. That's number eight in your hymnal, verses one and four. Please rise in body or in spirit. of Advent, we anticipate the coming of Christ, the Word made flesh among us. The liturgical color in Advent is purple, and we light a new candle each week, representing hope, peace, joy, and love. We wait, and in our waiting, we prepare our hearts to receive the mystery of incarnation. Emmanuel, God with us. One medieval mystic proclaimed that we are all intended to be mothers of God, giving birth to the holy. Meister Eckhart wrote, become aware of what is in you, announce it, pronounce it, and give birth to it. Like Mary, we are called to respond to the Spirit of God with a holy expectancy. Let it be me, with me according to your word. People of God, what is being born in you? Can you hear it? An expectant silence, a hushed anticipation, as if the very galaxy is holding its breath. There are some truths even the stars know, like darkness, like loneliness. 
and how the night can be a living thing. And how once, long ago, the night waited in wonder, along with the darkness and the loneliness, for the sound of a baby's cry, for the miraculous to come down to the earth mundane. Each Sunday, we thank God for one another. We thank God for God's spirit, for us to be the beloved community where all are cared for and all are welcome. And we do that together by rising and sharing the peace of God with one another. Please rise and say, may the peace of God be with you. Peace be with you. So good to do that. Yeah, so happy to yeah, have thank you. Guys. you. Peace be with you, John. So grateful you're with us. You I'm a very high spiritual person. I could tell. Peace. Yeah. yeah. I appreciate that. You feel that in here? Yeah. Peace Good. first church. Peace to everybody. Peace, Peace. everyone. Hi. And Marty's here. Here. Peace. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Morning, Anne. Anne and Anne. Yes. Hi, Cynthia. Peace. Hi, Cynthia. Good to see you both. Hi. Peace. Hi, Hi, Hi. Hi. Maddie's right here. It's just a. Hello, swing. hello. Hi, Maddie. Maddie's here. Maddie's here. Hi, Allison's. Morning, Paul. Hi, Anne. Hi, everybody. Everybody else. Are people still feeling overstuffed from Thanksgiving dinner? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> still have leftovers. 
loving the leftovers. Exactly. I think that's the best part. It is. It tastes better. I do too. <laughs> yeah, this year we have enough gravy to enjoy with the leftovers. So that that was great. That was really great. Yay. Mm -hmm. it's we went to my we went to my cousin's, but she very generously cooked us a turkey breast so that we could do leftovers at our house. Nice. Uh, really nice. Yeah. The tree is lit. Candles are burning. The sanctuary is dark and full and warm. Around you, people sing, silent night. The promise of Emmanuel, God with us, is at hand. In Bethlehem is born the one who is for all, the word made flesh who breaks the silence of despair. On Christmas, we celebrate with wonder that once more, the love of God unfolds, the hope of the ages is born among us. On Christmas Eve and during the 12 days of Christmas, we invite the word to dwell in us richly as we remember that God came to earth as we do, not great and powerful, but as a vulnerable baby. While they were in Bethlehem, the time came for Mary to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them at the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And then an angel of the Lord stood before them and said, glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said, do not be afraid, for see, I bring you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. Epiphany 
is a season of new light and fresh insight coming into the world as we celebrate the incarnation of Jesus as a gift for all people. We remember the story of the Magi traveling from lands afar to pay homage to the Christ child. We remember the flight of the Holy Family to Egypt under Herod's threat of death. Epiphany is a time when we open ourselves to new revelations and consider our callings, asking in the depth of winter, how do we shine our light in the world? The Works of Christmas by Howard Thurman. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and the princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flock, the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild nations, to bring peace among others, to make music in the heart.
We've come to the time in our service where I invite you to give of your tithes and offerings to support the ministries of this church. And there's just a few things I, I have to share. First, this month, we missed the opportunity to introduce our second Sunday special offering. It is going to support a special offering of our denomination, the United Church of Christ. This special offering is called Neighbors in Need. A full one third of that goes toward Native American ministries within uh, the, the United Church of Christ. And the rest goes to support this year uh, groups that are working toward eco-justice. The easiest way to give toward that special offering is to simply, if you are here in the sanctuary, you can place a gift in the offering plate on your way out and simply note in the memo portion, second Sunday offering. If you're giving online, you can go to our donate page, which Alex will share the link. And uh, please use the drop down menu to indicate that is a special second Sunday offering. Um, I also want to lift up, I have to lift up, the fact that on Tuesday, through the drop-in center, we served over 100 guests. Uh, it was incredible. Our whole uh, community hall was absolutely full to overflowing. We had to also serve people in the chapel and pop up more tables, make more space and more room. All of these individuals are folks that we are in the process of establishing relationship with through our drop-in center, which happens every Tuesday night right here in our doors. But so many people helped make Tuesday nights uh, a success. First, there were folks who um, prepared homemade um, dishes at home and brought those in. I'm, I'm seeing Karen Pence who came with Natalie and they brought some food. So many signed up to bring dishes. Um, others signed up to serve and of course, uh, JD and Byron who are here were serving on Tuesday night. Kim Darling served as our incredible volunteer coordinator. And of course, none of this could be done without our drop-in center coordinator, Jared Bowman. Um, Jared Bowman, I'm sorry. And so I just wanna remind you, as you give to this church, you support these opportunities. I will tell you that these over 100 individuals, including children, walked back out into a very cold, rainy night filled with gratitude that they had the opportunity to have a warm meal and to celebrate Thanksgiving in community. So thank you for all that you do. I also want to mention quickly um, that we have an upcoming toy drive. I won't go into all the details. You will find uh, an announcement including those details, not only in the Gabriel's Horn um, monthly newsletter that will come out next week, uh, but also in your worship folder in weeks ahead, we will be raising money not only for the Shaw Community Center toy drive, but we will also be sponsoring three families who need our assistance to be able to gift their children uh, this Christmas. We will also be supporting a wider circle. So there are so many ways to continue to give. And please do check uh, your worship folder and your newsletter for how to do that. And finally, <laughs> I want to remind you that last Sunday was our commitment Sunday. We um, closed out a, a successful stewardship drive, but there are still some of you we have not heard from in terms of completing your commitment card so that we know how to budget for the church next year. So if you have not yet completed your commitment card, you can either do so here in person with a hard copy that Lucille has right here at the back, um, or if you are joining us online, uh, go to our donate page, click on the 2024 commitment card, and please do make your commitment. We will have folks following up. Um, if, if you are a member and we have not yet heard from you, we would like to follow up with you. So um, make it easy on us. Just fill out your commitment card today. And with that, I just give thanks for the God who makes of every gift greater justice and love and peace in the world through First Church.
On Ash Wednesday, last year's palms are burned to ash, which we receive on our foreheads in the shape of the cross, remembering it is from dust that we come and to dust we shall return. Thus, the holy season of Lent begins. Lent is a journey through 40 days in which we traverse the inner terrain of the spirit, preparing our hearts to receive the mystery of resurrection. We devote ourselves to spiritual practices such as prayer, fasting, and giving to the poor. Holy Week begins with Palm Sunday as we remember Jesus' entry into Jerusalem riding a humble colt. On Monday, Thursday, we remember the Last Supper, and on Good Friday, we grieve the crucifixion of Jesus in solidarity with all who suffer. Lent invites us to take seriously the brokenness of the world, but death will not have the last word. A reading of excerpts from the 14th and 15th chapters of Mark. It was two days before the Passover. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. When it was evening, Jesus arrived with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, he said, truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, surely not I. Jesus answered, it is one of the twelve who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them and said, take, this is my body. And he took a cup, and after giving thanks, gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. Jesus said, this is the blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus, then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom.
On Easter Sunday, we celebrate the mystery of resurrection. In the 50 days of Eastertide, we proclaim that death was not the end for Jesus and that death does not have the last word for us. We are not left alone. The Holy Spirit is with us. Our tears are transformed into laughter, our heartache into brilliant hope. Jesus says to us, these things I have spoken, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. With the rising of the sun, the blooming of lilies, the singing of alleluias, we join with all of creation in praising God. In the Easter season, we listen to our lives and the world and hear that life is larger than suffering. We hear instead the miraculous assurance that the heartbeat of the world is God's joy. This is a poem called Risen by Jan Richardson. If you are looking for a blessing, do not linger here. Here is only emptiness, a hollow, a husk, where a blessing used to be. This blessing was not content in its confinement. It could not abide its isolation, the unrelenting silence, the pressing stench of death. So if it is a blessing you seek, Open your own mouth, fill your lungs with the air this new morning brings, and then release it with a cry. Hear how the blessing breaks forth in your own voice, how your own lips form every word you never dreamed to say. See how the blessing circles back again, wanting you to repeat it, but louder. How it draws you, pulls you, sends you to proclaim its only word, risen, Risen, risen.
Each Sunday, as a community, we come together and go to God in prayer. We offer God prayers of thanksgiving for the many blessings in our lives. We ask for God's accompaniment for the joys and celebrations, but also for the times when we may be in struggle or we, when we may need comfort. And after we share these prayers, we say the prayer of our Savior in one voice. And now I will get the mic and I'd love to lift up any prayers that people would like to share today. I have a hand holding my chair. I do. What prayers would we like to share today? Sure. I just want to send prayers to the family of a friend named Carolyn, who I knew since I was a, about 13 or 14, and she passed away, I believe it was last year, from cancer. Um, six months ago, I went to my uh, former sister-in-law's uh, funeral, and um, this time, during this time, my nephew has been dealing with all the probate issues uh, after her death, and I'm hoping that, praying, that he has finished and that he can now move on. I guess this could be considered a prayer, rather a public comment. Um, God prepared me with a revelation in the word thanks, uh, in thanksgiving. It would be the thanks coming from thanksgiving. Uh, I fell in love with freedom, and that is why I came to this church. Um, but the thanks in thanksgiving was actually a proclamation by the president, George Washington, in congressional resolution that was established the first national thanksgiving on november 26 1789 and the reason for that holiday was to give thanks and the idea of the giving thanks was for the new constitution that they were signing um, the signing of the constitution took place a year prior so 1789 was the day that Thanksgiving became a national holiday. And it was to give thanks to the Constitution. It's important to remember freedom comes within that Constitution, the rules and the laws. And um, I wanted to share that with you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you Amen. so much. Um, prayers for Israel and Palestine, as we are also moved by the images we see of the release to, of hostages and of the de detainees, um, but certainly concern and fear for what happens after this pause and the continuing death. A prayer is for hailing from my cousin's wife, Nancy, who is bedridden and couldn't join us for Thanksgiving, and for her husband, who's the, um, the caregiver. And I'd like to offer prayers of Thanksgiving for my dad, who joined me for a week in Spain with my son. Um, it was real special. Well, for all these prayers, both spoken and unspoken, uh, close to our heart, um, God, may you bind us together in love and hope. And now, with one voice, let us come together in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Give us 
not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 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 Thank you. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit blew through locked doors like the rush of a mighty wind, and tongues as a fire rested on each of them, kindling the common life and shared mission of the church. The liturgical color of Pentecost is red. In the Christian calendar, the season after Pentecost is the longest nearly half the year. We call this season ordinary time, as if the days pass with little to report. Yet, this is a season when we are called to live a passionate life of faith as co-creators with God, to lift our sails and be propelled by the winds of the Spirit. This is a season when we are profoundly engaged in a life of love and justice, remembering our charge from Jesus to tell the world of God's love, living as the body of Christ. Scripture reading, Acts 2, verses 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from the heaven there came a sound like the rush of a mighty wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability.
Friends, before our final blessing, I want to remind you to check our website, e-newsletter, and social media pages for announcements. If you are a new guest worshiping with us today who would like to stay connected to the life of our church, Lucille is holding up blue visitors cards in the back. We'd be happy for you to fill one of those out. If you're joining us on Zoom and you're a newcomer, please click on the link in your worship folder and you can fill out that visitor's form digitally. And now for just a few announcements. Uh, first, following worship, please do join us in the Narthex for coffee and fellowship. On Thursday evening at 6.30, please join Reverend Sam and the Worship Commission for the greening of the sanctuary. There will be pizza and music as we decorate together. All are welcome. Please let Sam know if you plan to attend. And next Sunday, we will celebrate the first Sunday of Advent as we prepare our hearts for Christmas. You don't want to miss it, and we don't want to miss you. I want to thank all who made today's service possible. Before I do that, one more announcement that I'm thinking of off the top of my head. Tomorrow morning, I get to travel to Puerto Rico for a clergy retreat for five days. I will be back next Sunday. I'm so grateful uh, to have this opportunity to travel. Um, but please know if there's anything you need over the course of the week ahead in terms of pastoral care, uh, please reach out to Reverend Sam. And now to thank all who made today's service possible. Lydia Peterson on sound, Alex Chang, our Zoom moderator, our wonderful liturgist, Reverend Sidney Avant and Andrew Hamilton, scripture readers, Moira Jones, Jamie Orr and Polly Gordon, our poetry readers, Sophie Jones, Lucille Dickinson, and Nora Marsh, our usher team of Aaron Williams and Lucille Dickinson, Kamisha Thomas, our Sunday morning coordinator, serving someone even now in the narthex, and Elisa Tanaka Dodge and Matt Dodge, who set up the, uh, all of our supplies for worship this morning. Marion Drake, our beautiful song leader, and Dennis Turner, our musician, as well as our coffee hour hosts, Nick and Nan McConnell. And now for our final blessing. Beloved community, for everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. In season and out of season, may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and give you peace. Go in peace. Amen.